Hello everyone this is Sandhya Adimuthu from the Quint and you're listening to Do I Like It a Quint production where we review anything and everything under the sun and in this episode I'll tell you do I like Nayantara's latest film Connect Nayantara is the lady superstar of the South Indian film industry you know like any other top stars from Tamil cinema I think her stardom can be partly attributed to being this elusive star you know what i mean like like for instance vijay or ajit or dhanush it's quite rare to see her be part of any promotional events of her films but that was not the case specifically for this film connect and after a very very long time she was seen in an interview she was at the preview show of the film and that was very interesting because you know i guess it's also because the film was backed by rowdy pictures a production house that was founded by her and uh, her husband filmmaker husband vignesh shivan and as a fan it's just so wholesome you know to see her in such a very happy and peaceful space because for all you know she is in this usual heroine in the south film industry i mean she's being called the lady superstar in south film industry i think i don't think it's for no reason right because especially in a very male dominated industry it's not a joke the kind of films that she has done the controversies that she's been through and you know rising all back like a phoenix i think she's just an amazing inspiration man okay i can go on and on and on and talk about nine forever but that's for another day let's come back to talking about connect movie review but before that go hit subscribe to the quins youtube channel and follow us on all podcast streaming platforms like spotify apple podcast and wherever you get your podcast Coming back to the review I think at the outset connect you know the movie feels like a horror drama it tries to scare the audience by you know leveraging the theatrics of the genre like the ultimate aim of a horror film is to make the audience feel scared but after watching the film I thought okay maybe it wasn't really a horror horror film per se but it was primarily an emotional drama the film beautifully talks about you know taking that first step to healing from personal losses but does the film really connect to the audience as deeply as the filmmakers intended it to uh let's see okay what is the story about it's about a very happy family right uh, you know a mother which is played by nayantara and then a father vinay rai they have a kid uh, a teenage girl haniya nafees and uh, there's a grandfather played by satyaraj they seem to be a very happy family but then life turns upside down right after vinay the father dies the daughter who misses her father badly she chooses to reach out to her dead dad you know with the help of an ouija board and obviously she unintentionally invites evil powers and ghosts the film is pretty much like any other horror film because there is this exorcism angle to it but i think what's very unique and different in this particular movie is that it has virtual exorcism which is done over a video call and that comes with its own challenges and interesting aspects The film kind of employs smart camera angles you know especially through video call interactions and close ups and it provides a very immersive and thrilling experience and in those moments i genuinely felt it reminds us of you know the exorcist or the conjuring the terrifying sequences in the film are like brilliantly choreographed with tiny comic reliefs you know during their build up and once you kind of least expect anything scary to happen boom the jump scares arrive and they are very very effective the film delves into the depths of pain loss and real difficulties of processing grief you know when life throws unbearable trauma at you one can either you know believe in god like very strongly or they could like turn to atheism out of anger and frustration and the film brilliantly captures this you know through satyaraj and haniya's character and also through uh, nayantara's character it's just beautifully like shown how people get to pick contrasting options you know when when similar kind of situations happen in their lives but what i really found confusing about connect is that uh, it switches between fear and faith which uh, is fine it questions religion but then you know it also submits to superstitious spiritual practices like I was like genuinely perplexed as to how I should feel you know the film kind of engages you as a thriller no doubt about it but then it falls short on the emotional level because you don't feel that impact right and I felt this strongly because connect is directed by filmmaker Ashwin Sarvanan who has previously delivered two of the finest thriller films 
Maya, which was acted by Nayantara, and Game Over, which starred uh, Tapsi Pannu. In addition, as I told you, Connect is bankrolled by uh, Nayantara and Vignesh Shivan. So the expectations for this film were very high. While it does succeed to some extent, you feel slightly unsatisfied. And I think that is exactly why the audience kind of tends to feel disconnected from Connect. But anyways, the song Idhuvum Kadandu Pogum, which played towards the end, uh, was just so refreshing and it kind of immediately transports you on a healing journey. It brings you happiness and gives you hope. So after all this talk, do I like Nayantara's Connect? Um, well, yes, I partly liked it because it was a great thriller. Uh, I mean, there were so many thrilling moments, but then emotionally, I did not feel invested in the film. And that was this episode of Do I Like It. Follow us on Instagram at The Quint and tell us what you want us to talk about next week. And check out our website, thequint.com, for more groundbreaking reports and videos. This was Sandhya Adi Muthu. And if you want to chat and talk about films and what you liked, what you didn't, ping me on Instagram. My handle is Sounds Good Chennai. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Do I Like It is a Quint original podcast hosted by Sandhya Adi Muthu, executive produced by Shelly Walia and Ritu Kapoor, produced by Anjali Palod, edited by Anjali Palod, theme music from BMG Production Music. You were listening to the Quint's podcast.